good morning and welcome back. 22 and a half minutes after 8, we go up to 9 here on the platform. Good morning, St. Lucia on this Wednesday. Started off on as a wet Wednesday. You let us know what the conditions are like in your neck of the woods. We are monitoring the weather as well. There's a shoreline which is creating some adverse weather conditions across our region and uh, two tropical waves out there as well, which we are monitoring. So we will keep you updated once the weather changes or once the advisory upgrade is upgraded we will alert you uh, my next special guest is already online so i'll move right along and introduce him to master and artist alvin Santuma has been described as a storyteller with a very deep, deep passion and lifelong desire to document saint lucia's cultural heritage through his drawings and paintings for him rediscovery and preservation of all the treasures forming the formidable expanse loosely termed the St. Lucian environment, history, culture, and folklore would be his lifelong achievement. He is the BPE and the CO co-sponsor, that is, of the new and uh, the new uh, the Platinum Artistic Tour Masters Club, a new speciality club for creatives, a double triple crown award. He has been awarded the St. Lucian Medal of Honor, gold uh, for eminent service rendered in the field of uh, culture. Uh, Alwyn St. Thomas is online on the flow landline. We would have hoped to have him on the flow video line this morning. But Alwyn, thanks for making the transition and thanks for joining us. Let's learn a bit more about St. Lucian uh, folklore and culture, about Sukiyo and uh, much more with, with Alwyn St. Thomas now. Alwyn is online with us. Hi Alwyn, can you hear me? Is Alwyn online? We seem to have lost connection with Alwyn, and we will try to re-establish that connection momentarily as the time moves now, 24 and a half minutes after 8 o'clock in St. Lucia and across the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, the platform uh, concludes on top of the hour of 9. There's been so much on the schedule um, that we had uh, planned out. So we, my producers are saying we will um, now display a few images from um, Alwyn's latest production, Sukiyo, as we try to establish and re-establish contact with him. We seem to have lost you there. We're now, we're now prepared to, to feature you. Um, Alwyn, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Shannon. Uh, thanks for making the adjustment. I know it's been one of those um, rough Wednesdays. Um, let, let's delve into to Sukiyo. You tell us a bit more about um, St. Lucian folklore through this through this production. Yes. Um, in the 1980s, I started writing a book on St. Lucian folk tales, which emanated into a graphic novel. It, uh, I could probably start with a quote from Derek Walcott. He says, the truest writers are those who see language not as a linguistic process, but as a living element. And to create the, the environment for what I was doing, I, I could start in this way. It is the late early 1950s in St. Lucia. Imagine the early 1950s in St. Lucia. The electricity supply is scarce supplied by a few desperate units scattered throughout the country. Picture yourself on a cold, windswept evening in the little community of Piai. The villagers gather around a warm buko for storytelling, a typical setting in the countryside in those days. As the wakote or kote begins to weave his tail, he starts with a riddle. He is quick to which the the, 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 the the crowd would respond, quack. Tout sa bon dieu mette a souhaité. Tout chose. As he weaves his tail, one would see, one would imagine the unseen in the flickering shadows caused by the iridescent flame. When I wrote Sukuyon, 
I try to recapture what we call the fast feeding in traditional St. Lucia because with the coming of modernization and electricity, we stopped telling stories. And in those days, so storytelling used to be done at weeks and during gatherings like what I started a while ago. I tried to do what I call discover the undiscovered country. Let me start with the first speech of the book. Long, long ago, when all those creatures were friends and people used to talk to Kwapo, Quichet, and Maniku, the land was like a virgin, pure and of a fairy tale like quality. Yet it was a strange time, a strange and troubled time. It is against this background that my tale is woven. The tale is about a little boy. Some say he was called Saul. Others say he had no name. In the end, you will decide. Come closer, readers. The story begins. Quick quack. It was the end of the rainy season, and the child and his father were preparing to go into the forest to look after the cold pits. So lived with his mother, Mont Chalon, and Andre, his father, in a little house near the edge of a great forest. So, yeah, mama, be careful in the woods today. Eh? You know how you always in accident. And remind your father to bring me some coals. Bye-bye, Dudu. As Audrey and his son walked towards their destination, the forest appeared mysteriously quiet. Papa, don't you think it's strange? The birds have not welcomed us with their singing today. Don't worry, child. Look at the sky. It is about to rain. Come, there's a shed near the, our old coast. We will find shelter there if we hurry. Look, Saul. Ahead in the clearing, there is the shed. They could see the old shed now. Audrey had built it many summers ago. Its wood was decayed and rotting away like all the fallen leaves and branches on the forest floor. Finally, Erdogan and his son arrived at the shed. Saul was delighted. All that walking had made him tired. Yet something still didn't seem right. Papa, the forest feels strange today as if it is watching us. Everything is so still. Yawn. As the child lay in the leaves, he fell asleep. Yawn, so tired, is watching us. Saul sat down in the shed himself, that child and his imagination. That's it. So much. Yes, we have. We just um, taking taking in um, the story as presented by you. T tell us, Alwyn, um, from your perspective, why is it important? And, and you described it in in the preamble as um, the fast um, feeding tradition of storytelling. Why is it important, Alwyn, for us to continue to tell those stories of 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 um, Saint Lucian heritage? It, it is very important. It is essential. It is who we are. Because our storytelling, our culture, is a unique culture in the entire world. It is unique to us. We are people who have, we are the people who came, according to this textbook. Because we are people from Africa, from Europe from India, from China, and we've created a new and unique culture. And it's part of our psyche. And even as we move forward into modernization, it's important to know where we are from, where it is who we are. It is the way we walk, the way we do the things we do. It's what makes us unique. And it's important that the new generation coming up 
know that, yes, in the six days, Bugs Bunny and these things, but we have Copel Happy and Copel Tig. Mm -hmm. So we have our own... It's part of building our own self-confidence and also retaining you... To to grow, you must know where from whence you come. You know from from where you where you have developed. What 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 what's your makeup? You must know who you are, and that gives you the self confidence to be as powerful as anyone in the world. Absolutely. But when we start, and how do we begin to rekindle that interest in in, in storytelling of our folklore? Brother, a long time ago, <laughs> just like in the stories, a long time ago, when you brought up in a house like the household I was brought up in, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid, I remember we I was brought up in Central Castry. So, and my dad, Sir Dunstan, had some really illustrious friends himself, Derek Walker, mm -hmm. Harry Sand, Hunter Francois, you know. Roderick Walcott, Sparse Ellen, they, and, and there was the Arts Guild in the town hall. So as a child, only listening to them debates. But going over to that town hall, because not far from the city, mm -hmm. central to Castro, uh, going there, um, sometimes we not, that or not, let us come in, but on the night he didn't, we'd climb up the slats on the side of the town hall and watch the plays. Mm and see Arthur Jacobs and all these guys, Dream and Monkey Mountain, Tija and his brothers. So my dad also bought a lot of comics, the illustrated classics when we were young, and led us to read a lot of books on African culture and Chinese culture, Japanese culture. So that was the kind of um, environment mm -hmm. that I came so I realized that the importance of, but personally, I also, I, as a child, I also wanted to put these images I was seeing in the plays mm -hmm. and the stories I was hearing, I wanted to put them in pictures. So yes, as an artist, I was, yes, tormented by the colors I wanted to the colors I was seeing my dad and, and what not doing. I, 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 obviously, he never thought to paint because he didn't think that an artist could survive in this part of the world. But we started doing our own thing anyway. And it's the environment that you bring up your child and the next child, the next generation. That is why it's so important that we share this information for the young Senusian children growing up to know the rich culture and history. I'm so happy you went there, Orwin, because that was one question that I would have asked you, the, the role that um, Sir Dunstan had in um, painting who you are and the appreciation that you have for, for folklore, but, but you, you've already gone there. Um, I'm, I, am, I am very much interested in how we pass it on because, and, and we appreciate those home circles um, no longer exist if, 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 if they do in one or two areas. Um, but very few youngsters growing up now will have the experience that you did. So how do we sustain it for the next generation? You're doing your, your, your fair share of, of work, but how do we pass it on and make it appealing, make it make it fancy for, for, for youngsters and the future generation to, to, to be interested in storytelling of our folklore? Well, that is why I, I, I use, as my dad and generations, or people of his generation, shared information. For example, as a child, I took a little while to read. Because we were surrounded by all these books on Shakespeare and whatnot, for example. So my dad used psychology and me and, and started buying the illustrated classics. So I would, I would read mm -hmm. Macbeth and these plays in pictures. I would be 
I would, I would look at them as a child and see all these interesting pictures of, of um, Ivanhoe and, uh, and, and all these great, these great stories, and Romeo and Juliet and whatnot, the mm-hmm. illustrated classics, mm-hmm. they were called. And it forced me to read because I wanted to see what these bubbles were saying. Mm-hmm. And that's how I started reading. And I think that the the Sukuyon is part of that same development because comics are a popular form. And it's a way to reach the younger generation because, yes, there's all the text and whatnot, but the pictures to make it inviting mm. and attractive mm-hmm. to that younger, more inquiring generation. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, but um, when you look at it, do you see you see the the culture, the folklore still still in good good and solid hands. You think, or more work needs to be done? There's a lot more work to be done. I think successive governments have not done enough. I, I it's not political at all. That's mm-hmm. why I said successive governments. Mm-hmm. We have mostly ignored our culture, and a lot of our the ills of, of, of our society is as a result of ignoring our arts and our culture. And I think more should be done in schools mm. to, because this is what we need to show the, 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 this generation coming up, this, this, this new, exciting, maybe these kids could be even a new Derek Walker, a new Dunson Sentoma, a new mm-hmm. Harry Simmons, a new mm-hmm. Hans Bassoir, mm-hmm. you know? But we have to stimulate the brains. We have to let them know from whence they come. You know what they've inherited, this rich treasure, their sin. Whoa, whoa. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, for example, my wife's dad, um, they call him Mr. Who, was a musician playing Seminars and the La Rose and stuff like that in the country. And Lord Tennant, the Queen's cousin, told my wife and I that they'd, they'd, um, they'd never been, he was a saxophonist of his generation. Now we have mm-hmm. all this here mm-hmm. and we don't. All we see is the bad news and all we focus on is the bad. But there's so much richness, there's so much beauty in this beautiful country of ours. Yeah. My old man used to tell us, in fact, he used to take us into the countryside as children, bring us out. And in fact, that is the same, this is exactly what happened with himself and Derek, because both of them were, were, were studying um, the European art, European literature. And what happened was Harry Simmons was the one instrumental in taking them out into the countryside to be appreciate the noble breadfruit and the people, the food, the beauty of St. Lucia. And you can see it reflected in my dad's paintings and their paintings. Mm-hmm. So we have to do the same. We have to do our part. Yeah. All when um, I, uh, Father Anthony has done a lot with the mm-hmm. FRC as well, trying to retain our culture. Absolutely. All when I share, I share an opinion that um, our heritage and um, culture and, and the arts possess the the opportunity to to be that golden key which unlocks all the economic. Um, struggles that we are facing and, and the social um, problems that, that, that we, we, we now confront with. Would you agree? Absolutely. Are you talking to, you're talking to somebody who's been trying to preach that and share that mm. because the creative economy can be the solution to our problem. Mm. We have the, the level of creativity in our young people is incredible mm-hmm. and it's unharnessed. I mean, we see some musicians, some people trying to break through. And I, again, I go back to our education system 
and our government, we, yes, we, we need math and English, obviously, <laughs> you know, but even Sir Arthur Lewis, who is, was an economist, and economists and these people who are more technical and mathematical brains can't, don't normally see the artistic side of things, but Sir Arthur Lewis warned a country where the arts, the cultural desert. Mm. And Albert Einstein, another very sick, the, probably one of the most technical and scientific brains in the world, said that creativity is intelligence having fun, and that creativity may be the highest form of intelligence. But we see that child at the back of the class, the dreamer who wants to dream, yeah. who wants to, anything that child is lazy. That child only wants to write poems. That child wants to sing. That child, and you think, boy, gee, I want that child to do, I want my child to be a lawyer, a doctor. Mm -hmm. You understand? An engineer. And we successive governments have blanked our education system. I know slowly it's trying, but we have to do a lot more to harness these children and harness it's, it's a long haul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, there was a quote, there is a, there's a statement from the World Bank from many years ago. The World Bank advised the government of St. Lucia that the creative on economies are the way to go, and especially to countries like St. Lucia. It, we only look at tourism and agriculture. But there's a lot. We can probably move this country forward and into a lot more things. What happened to the Rat Island Foundation? You know, there's, there's a, so much that can be done, but we just have to take that first bold step. Maybe we need a minister who is more sensitive to culture for this to happen. Yeah, um, but it wouldn't happen overnight, uh, you agreed. It, there, there is a huge cultural... Uh, makeover which needs to happen because we've been cultured in, in this way where we think boy the arts are, are less uh, less important than the other the other academic um, subjects and where we think our our children are only only successful when they become lawyers and doctors um, but but that's not the case so it's not going to happen overnight Alwyn but but it's a discussion which needs to happen now um, a, a, f a few more before we let you go there, there is and it shouldn't even, it shouldn't start there, but we have to encourage that generation that's already there. There is need for for, for urgent need um, always for a home for the arts where people can go and perform, just like your dad did at the town hall m many decades ago, and and others did. But that space perhaps is 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 no longer available for 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 that sort of activity. But there is a need for a theatrical home where people can go and perform their plays uh, and do that sort of thing? Yes. Um, we can't call ourselves civilized. According to Arthur Lewis, a country where the art is a cultural desert. Mm -hmm. How can we be, how can we encourage our kids without a home for dance and theater? How can we encourage our young artists without a museum, an art museum where you can see the art of famous St. Lucians, famous artists from all over the world. We need to establish these things. And, 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 and governments must understand that this could be part of the tourism package. For example, I designed the National Independence Monument of St. Lucia, a 30-foot structure to go on the waterfront. It was supposed to have been part of the of the change in the modernization of the city of Cadiz, but government after government can't see the, the, the can't see it. The idea was it's supposed to be an attraction to the city of Cadiz, like the Statue of Liberty. But and sometimes you can't blame the ministers because and the <laughs> prime ministers because they have to build a footpath. Mm -hmm. They have to fit. They have to do what they have to do to be re-elected in five years' time. And it's by building a footpath 
or by building a fence, doing the small things that they so they, they only look at the small things yep. that will have them reelected yeah. and can't see the wider vision. Yeah, because I was I was about to come in and say, Alwyn, um, in 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 so doing, they're missing out on a significant portion of the populace um, who would appreciate an investment in that in independence monument and and who would appreciate what that sort of movement would do for us as a as a small and great nation. So so whereas they continue to build the footpaths, they they're missing out, and and the numbers are showing, you know. You're missing out on a large segment of the population. Um, your final words, Alwyn, before we let you go this morning. We've been an interesting discourse. Well, I hope you invite me again so we can have a little more discourse on, on this same thing because I'm a serious advocate on the economy, mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot we can discuss. Yes. I have a lot of writings on it, and... Uh, I also am um, planning to do, uh, to invite, um, my, my major series as an artist is the Moon Dance and Masquerade series. Mm -hmm. And I'm planning uh, an international exhibition in the UK in the summer of 2023. Awesome. The Moon Dance and Masquerade is based on what has happened to what I call the lost masquerade tradition of St. Lucia. Because again, I grew up in Central Castries. Mm -hmm. And like so many things that were important to us, it has disappeared. We only see the masquerade now as a dance. Although June Tedrick and, and Barry Joe have been doing dance with it, and June has been training young children. But the masquerade tradition is important because it was Orin Bully who showed me that that's a Dominican cultural activist because we do some research and you will see that what the, mas the, the symbolism of the masquerade was when the plantation owners allowed the slaves any form of gaiety from the misery they revert to the mass traditions of the ancestors but the plantation owners seen the slaves and gaiety and happiness would think that a happy slave, these are stupid people, a happy slave is a good slave, but it was really a secret rebellion. It was a secret link to the land that they savagely torn. So it was a way of soothing an aching heart by doing a tradition, although it, although it was no longer a death tradition, a fertility tradition, a roof tradition, but it was a way, a secret link to the motherland that they were savagely born. Yeah. I um, will definitely invite you again, um, Alwyn, to discuss to discuss these these um, aspects of our cultural heritage. And I'm hopeful that at Junior all this weekend we can see the toes um, and we can see other elements being being displayed, so the the youngsters can can get that appreciation. Um, Suki, where is it available quickly, Alwyn? Before we allow you to go. Sukuyo is available on Amazon. I, I, I did the print on demand because I think it's best. And it's best that you put your, your work is available to the world. So you can share the link and, and anyone can order on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's available as a killer or paperback version. Yeah. We wish the production the very best, Alwyn, and then we'll be in touch with you in the not too distant future. Thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. It was very great being there. Thank I, you. I enjoyed as well. My pleasure. I'm Alwyn Santoma, my very special guest. I'm this hour discussing the production of uh, the book Tsukiyo, Tsukiyo, which is now available. Um, delves into uh, aspects of our uh, cultural heritage, which are extremely fascinating. You want to um, get your copy and read the uh, novel Tsukiyo from Alwyn Santoma today. There's lots more. We will be discussing with Alwyn at a later date. You want to stay close to Good Morning St. Lucia Vibes at Sunrise, uh, where we um, continue to enlighten you and inform you of um, so much that's happening, not just in St. Lucia, but around the world. If you are heading north, um, we want to alert you now of an accident in the Union um, area, the Union stretch, which is now on the way. Can we put the graphic on screen as well, the, the, the video, if it's available? 
thank you so much. So there's a backup of traffic. That looks like the main Union Road, is it? No, it looks like um, Almondale. That is the Almondale Road, if, if, if I'm correct. That, is, that appears to be the Almondale Road, or is it? So if you are traversing the Union, the union area, we can take it down now. Um, please be mindful that there is a, a backup of traffic along, along that section of road where you want to uh, proceed with caution and um, be vigilant as well. Slow down. Um, slow down, slow down, slow down, um, and be patient on the roads this morning as well. Um, we did have some rains earlier, so um, exercise caution when traversing the streets throughout the course of today, so particularly if you're headed north into the Union area, um, be alert that there is a backup of traffic as well. Today is a very important day um, for my alma mater, the Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School, Donnelly. As soon as you can, we will um, put the graphic on as we encourage all past students to visit the school today wednesday the leon has 37th anniversary we take a moment and um say happy anniversary to the leon has comprehensive secondary school lhcss we don't often say it but we all know that it is the best institution on the island um so to past and um, current students past and current and um, support staff as well. Happy, happy anniversary. I saw Miss Arthur Lee some times, uh, sometime last week, and um, she was very much excited about the anniversary celebrations. Miss Arthur Lee, our um, art teacher, I'm hoping that she got a ride to the school. She says once she gets a ride this morning, she will be there. So it's the anniversary started off, or gets on the way at nine um, this morning. Uh, with an assembly and parade, then there's a talent show and a super scope, uh, and several past students, now DJs, will be at the school, 4 p.m. after school lime. Is it after school, after work lime? I think they put after work, but they should have put after school, man. Uh, they should have put after school. I wouldn't have charged them a consultancy fee for that, you know. They should have put after school lime. That would have been sexy, you know. If you, if you tell me to dress up in school uniform, Yeah, but, but these same people, he told them to put their uniform to come to the school. It would have been good, Mr. Lou, what to say on after-school lime, man. Uh, but it happens from 4.30 p.m. today, the after-school lime. Um, but the anniversary celebration start off from 9 this morning. So make some time throughout the day and visit the alma mater. Is that Lubo calling? Is that Mr. Lubo calling on the WhatsApp platform? The Andrew will take a look at it. Um, and we do a... We yeah, invite you to be a part of the celebration, the 37th anniversary of um, the Leon Comprehensive Secondary School. Talent show, parade, assembly, and there's so much to flow. Um, WhatsApp platform is on 584-0600, and um, you touch base with us throughout the course of the program as well. So past, present, and uh, prospective students. <laughs> If, um, yeah, you want to be there and be a part of the activity today. Happy independ happy anniversary, LHCSS. Definitely going to be a lime today, Wednesday. Don, we can take it down. Thanks so much. Just about four minutes before we conclude um, today's program. I know the police investigations are ongoing and um, the law are currently on the hunt for uh, the shooter or shooters involved in last evening's double homicide in the community of Cicero. Um